Morning everyone and welcome to Eden, Australia. So in terms of where we are right now, we are currently about 230 miles south of Sydney, which is where we started two days ago. Now this is day three of our short cruise on Coral Princess. So the way this works is yesterday we spent the day at sea for the entire day. The day before that was embarkation day, which is where we boarded the ship up in Sydney. And tomorrow we'll be heading back up to get off the ship tomorrow morning unfortunately but hey we're not going to talk about that yet not not right now now weather today is looking pretty to be fair a heck of a lot colder than i was expecting an australian cruise to be so it's currently 12 degrees and it's nine o'clock in the morning but it's only to go to about 15 so i am going out with my trousers my t-shirt but i'll be taking a jumper and a jacket with me which feels a little bit weird i always thought if you cruised here especially in october it would be shorts and t-shirt as an absolute maximum. But <clears throat> hey, now plan for today, I'm hoping to get out and hoping to whale watch, but anyone that's watched these videos before will know that I'm usually not the luckiest when it comes to wildlife. Now, unfortunately the princess excursion was fully booked before I even got on the ship. So I haven't been able to book anything through those guys, but I'm hoping that when I get ashore, do you know when you get off the ship and there's like a whole avenue of traders or there's like a couple of even just a couple of stalls that people can take you whale watching or they can take you on a tour i'm hoping that that exists here if not i mean it it looks you probably can't see out the window right now but it looks beautiful out there and it looks very calm so i might actually just go and set up camp with a coffee somewhere and try and just watch from the shore apparently Apparently, but this is probably going to jinx it, there's a lot of whales here and you can quite often see them without even going on a boat. So watch <laughs> watch this space, please cross anything that you can for me because I'm really hoping that I'll see something out there. But hey look, for now, there's probably enough talking in here, the plan now is to get up to the buffet, get breakfast and then get out at a normal time before all aboard at 3pm. So I'm aiming if it's 9 now, I'd like to be out easily by 9.30 which is where the buffet actually comes in really handy because you just run up, grab something, and then get the heck off the ship. So look, for now, I guess let's get out there and let's explore Eden, I'll show you. So one thing that I definitely need to say is that I am so impressed with the food quality in the buffet on this ship. I've been on ships before where, to be honest, the buffets felt a little bit subpar to the main dining room. And generally across the industry this year, I felt as though the buffet has really had its game upped. And that was definitely the case on here. So I'm hopefully showing you just a couple of the different stations that you could go to at the moment. But the choice was absolutely massive. And the buffet here went down both sides of the ship. So... Yeah, it, it didn't feel too busy at any point. Now, the best thing for me about eating in the buffet in the morning is that, I mean, just look at the view. Like, the views are absolutely remarkable, and it tends to be much rarer that you would get a table by the window in the main dining room. So, yeah, really big tip. If you like to watch the scenery in the morning, get up to the buffet. So, it's definitely part of me that was wishing I was staying on the ship today because the weather actually up here if you're in the sun it's pretty good and look at how many loungers there are when do you ever when do you ever see that on a cruise ship so yeah i am now heading off just for breakfast so let's try and see a whale Now one thing that I do really enjoy about cruising with Princess is that they have these huge digital screens all over the ship, so you usually find them by the elevator. I would always recommend just double check the local time when you get to those screens just to make sure the clock hasn't changed through the night because if you forget that and you go ashore, <laughs> yeah, good luck if you're late back for the ship. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Thank you, sir. Perfect, thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. 
So we're now off the ship, and one of the really cool things about Eden Cruise Port is that this little section on the left hand side, they actually bring like a local market there every time a ship comes in. So you can go and buy, well I mean you can literally buy anything that you would imagine from a market. So it's actually pretty cool, and that's the same meeting point as where you would get a shore excursion from. So if you do book something through your cruise line, you'll probably get put on a bus here. Right, you know those situations in life when you think, I really should learn from that and I really should do it better or do it different next time? Well, I have now got off the ship and, as you know, was hoping to go on a whale watching excursion, but in Alaska we missed it because we were fully booked. And unfortunately, exactly the same thing has happened here. We got off the ship thinking there would be loads, because apparently there are whales everywhere here, and yeah, they're all fully booked. Apparently you had to be off the ship at the crack of dawn to try and secure one of them so look all hope is not lost hope has certainly diminished since getting off but there are loads of lookouts here so the plan now is to have a wander around the town head to the lookouts i've been given a map by um the tourist office at the port which is pretty handy and it's got all the lookouts on it so hopefully <laughs> we're still going to see them Okay, so the first viewpoint I'm going to take you guys today is up at a place called Rotary Park, which is at the top of the hill, back overlooking where the ships are. So you can see that we are docked back there, you can just see us, and the viewpoint is round at the top of that hill, so if you follow that road up that way, you'll get to where we're going. Hopefully, there'll be a decent view and hopefully we'll get to see a whale. Now, if I was to say that I'm not the most experienced whale watcher, that would be the biggest understatement I've ever made in my life. So, yeah, I definitely benefited from all this signage that's there. Really interesting, actually, because it gives you a good feel for, you know, what to look out for, why they're there, where they've been going. So, really interesting, actually. The one bit of advice that I would give is if you are considering a trip like this or an excursion like this, take some coffee, take some water, take some snacks with you, because as you can see here it really does turn into a bit of a waiting game because you're not just looking at a pool of water, you're literally looking at a full panoramic shot and that whale could be anywhere there. Now what I'll do, I'll take you now down to the next viewpoint so you can get a feel for that one as well, but it's a pretty similar story with every single one of these that you go to. The views are incredible, but you do really have to have quite a good eye at times to actually spot a whale, but hey, Watch this space and I'll tell you in a sec if I had any joy. Okay, delighted to report that out there I have just seen humpback whales breaching, which is mental. But I mean, these little viewpoints are brilliant. So if you look, I mean, there's not a soul here because the entire coast is littered with them. Now, obviously you're not guaranteed to see anything at any of these viewpoints, but it's just brilliant how you can come here, grab a seat on a bench with a coffee, and just enter your own little world and hopefully see whales. So, we've just seen humpback whales breaching on the horizon, and then literally just in front of the camera now, which I'll try and put a video on, but I'm not sure if it worked. We've just seen, I would love to see what type of whale, but it was like a whale's back coming up to the surface, so cannot believe I've been off the ship for about an hour and have actually seen them. So I'd actually go as far as saying that this has gone well. And lo and behold, this video actually seems to have worked. So in terms of where you're looking, if you look directly in the middle of the screen, you can see that sort of long black shape. Keep watching that over the next couple of seconds and you'll see that it'll move across a little bit and then it'll disappear under the water. But honestly, seeing this was just one of those moments in life where you just get covered in goosebumps. I actually couldn't believe that I could just see this totally free of charge watching from the shore. Yeah, absolutely unbelievable.
Okay, you'll probably remember me back at the room moaning about the temperature, which I should really learn not to do that. But yeah, it's actually worked out roasting today when you're in the sun. So I'm walking about in full length trousers, a jumper and a jacket. So I'm now, as you can see, heading back to the ship to change and yeah, just be a little bit more prepared for now heading up to the beach. So we'll get back on, get changed and see you back out here shortly. Okay, it's now half 12 and the good thing about all aboard here today is 3.30 which means that it's given me time to go back, change and actually I can now head up to the beach which is about 20 minutes walk in this direction which I'll take you now but it means that you've still got plenty of time and you can get back to the ship for lunch as well so if you're coming here you definitely don't have to budget a full day out where you go off the ship at 9 o'clock in the morning and you get back just in time for sail away you do have the ability to pop back in between but yeah look I guess next one you'll hear from me will be hopefully when we get to the beach or when we get to the town where everyone comes first Okay, this probably isn't the most photogenic background for this statement, but we're now heading into the town centre. So we'll have a look around here, and then after that, we're gonna head down and spend a bit of time, hopefully on the beach, hopefully in the sunshine. Quite an interesting port actually, you know you go to a lot and they're famous for something or they've got like a, uh, if you remember Skagway they had those um, like dough boy things they were called. Now they don't actually have that here, what they're most famous for is the fact that there's whales all over the coastline so I guess what that means is the town centre is maybe a bit more like a town centre that you would visit if you lived here rather than one that you would come on holiday which is fine, it's still lovely to walk around. But heading down now to the main event, which is, what, about a five minute walk from the main street, which is down to the main beach, which apparently has got quite a lot of whale lookout spots on it. So who knows, might even see more from what we saw this morning and maybe get to show you guys a little bit closer up. But promising nothing, I think we've done okay so far. But yeah, let's see how we can get on. down the street and that is on the other side of the road. I mean honestly how is this place even real? This could not be any more different to anything I've seen before. It's just amazing. So there's a lot of people that I speak to whether it be my friends, whether it be people at work who maybe don't necessarily get the draw or the attraction to a cruise and do you ever get those moments, I'm having one right now which is a bit weird, I had it leaving Sydney as well, where just even for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, however long that moment lasts, where just everything seems fine and you're not stressed, you're completely switched off from the outside world and yeah, I have just stumbled upon this beach which, I mean it must be a good kilometre long anyway and there's not a soul on it and it's just amazing that a cruise carrying 2,000 people can bring you to somewhere where within, what, a 30 minute walk of the port, you are somewhere completely remote from the, from the rest of the world, or so it seems. And yeah, this to me, honestly, is what cruising is all about. Get dropped in a port that you maybe don't know a huge amount about in the morning, just throw your trainers on and go for a walk, and chances are you're gonna come across something really special, and wait till I show you where I am right now, and hopefully, you'll see what I mean. So 
So as much as I hate to say it, it's time to head back to the ship. Now, it's about a 30 minute walk from here, which will mean that we'll get back for about 3 p.m. So we've got about an hour before sailing away at four. Now, plan for when we get back. I'm very intrigued to see how Coral Princess handles crowds on the top deck. I reckon everyone is probably going to be trying to get a lounger up there, given the fact it is glorious. I mean, as if it was meant to be 12 degrees today. This has worked out amazing. But yeah, very intrigued to see if I can actually get a chair if I get back an hour before sail away. I think sailing out of here is gonna be stunning. There might even be an option to see more whales as we go. So I guess watch this space on that one. But for now, we're gonna go back a slightly different way. So previously we came down, I appreciate you can't see what way that is, but we came down that way <laughs> through the town. Whereas the route we're going to take back is going to hug the coastline on a new coastal path that they've built back to the port. So hoping to get more views like this because I'm not ready to give this up yet. And I will talk to you when we're next back on the ship. Okay, so that's me back on the ship and today, today really has been brilliant. Now, the fact that if you were to travel our cruise route by car, we're only really about a four and a half to five hour journey south of Sydney. So we're not really, in relative terms, that far away. But what I've done today, I honestly feel like I've visited another part of the world completely. This is so far away from the hustle and bustle of just typical city life it's been great to just completely detach now time wise it's quarter to four and sail away is at four o'clock so i reckon the top deck i haven't been up there yet but i reckon it's going to be pretty busy because of the fact the weather is so good outside it's currently about 18 degrees and pure sun which is great so long may that continue Hopefully the fact that I've just told you that doesn't mean that I'm going to go up and <laughs> suddenly it'll start pouring with rain. That'll probably happen, though, in my luck. But when we were whale watching earlier, someone actually said to us, hey, when you leave on the cruise ship later, make sure you look to see if it passes by the whales. Now, I hadn't even thought of this, but where the whales were breaching was quite far out. So hopefully, hopefully the ship will go that way, because if we pass breaching whales, that is gonna be absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna take you up to the top deck, show you what Sail Away looks like on Coral, and maybe even show you a little bit of whale activity as well. Now, the plan for tonight, I'm gonna to be eating in the main dining room. I tried the speciality restaurant last night. So tonight is back to the main dining room, just to see what the food's like in there. And then after that, I am so excited because tonight is the, the main princess production show. Now, we had a new show called Spotlight Bar on Discovery Princess a few weeks ago, and it was brilliant. The show on here is called Encore, which I don't, I don't actually think I've seen that before. I don't think that was on Regal when I cruised on her. So actually really excited to see how this production show differs to the likes of Spotlight Bar. I always think they are probably my favorite thing about it. Well, usually the, the big lines like Princess, like Norwegian, like Royal Caribbean. It's that big, over-the-top, dram dramatic production that they put together that I absolutely love. So yeah, hopefully I'm not going to be bitterly disappointed with that tonight. But hey, look, I guess we should probably head up to the top deck before the ship leaves and we are stuck in my bedroom having a chat. So look, we'll head up there now. As you can see here, as expected, the top deck was, <laughs> yeah pretty busy definitely in the sunshine anyway now that said the ship did handle crowds really well and they had a band up here which actually was pretty nice to so just chill out grab a drink grab a cocktail and get ready to leave eden
Okay, so that's us leaving Eden and look at this weather. Literally no idea where this has come from. But tonight we're heading back down to Sydney and then we actually get off the ship tomorrow um, when we get down there. So mental to think it's now nearly over. Okay, so that's us, we're, we're cruising. We've now left Eden, Australia, and we're now heading north back to Sydney, where we're gonna dock tomorrow morning. So, we're not gonna talk about disembarking yet, that's gonna be tomorrow's job. We'll get to that when we get to it. But for now, we've got one more night to enjoy this ship, so let me take you downstairs and walk you through what is going on tonight. So that's me in the room, ready to go back out tonight. So as I said earlier, I'm going to be going to the production show tonight, which I can't wait for. Before that, I'm going to go and get some dinner, so I'll show you what that looks like. And before that, I know what you're thinking, I'm going to put some after sun on, because I, <laughs> I didn't realise the sun was going to be quite so bright today, so I'm a little bit red and a little bit warm right now. <laughs> but, well, we'll fix that relatively quickly. Now, after that, we've got, even although it was the last night, we've still got a full itinerary for all the different things that you can do, which I showed you in one of the last videos. But the sort of things that are on tonight, so after the show, which finishes at 10.15, so already pretty late, you can then go to live music with the ship band, you can go to like a vocal entertainer, there's a live finesse quartet, maybe like a string quartet that might be. Music trivia, that's where you'll probably find me. Um, and then yeah, there, there's loads going on on here. I mean, there's stuff on here that begins at 11, 15 p.m. So this ship definitely has a livelier nightlife than what Alaska did on Discovery Princess, which has caught me totally off guard. And that's probably how I would sum up this cruise generally. Yes, it's been a, week, a weekend cruise, which typically they do have a livelier crowd on it. But on this one, I've actually found the crowd to be a little bit older than expected, no offence to anyone on this cruise that later finds these videos, but it has been an older audience than what I was expecting it to be. But that said, the ship does carry on pretty late. In Alaska it would get to midnight and there would be nothing really left to do, whereas on here there's still stuff going on at half past midnight. I probably, I would love to say I could speak for one o'clock, two o'clock, but Unfortunately, not on not on here. I've been relatively well behaved. But look, for now, um, I'm going to take you out in the ship and show you what's going on tonight. But I think the show will probably be no phones, no cameras, so probably can't show you anything there. So it makes sense to say right now that thank you just so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this vlog series, please think about subscribing to the channel and please also click that thumbs up button, which you should be able to do just underneath the video as always. But look, for now, um, this is the last time I'll physically speak to you. I'll probably do a voiceover on the clips that are coming up. But thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll catch up with you all soon. So my venue for dinner tonight was the Bordeaux dining room, which is one of the main dining rooms on board Coral Princess. Now, if you'd like to see more of what these rooms actually look like, then you can check out my full ship tour, which you should be able to access that just by clicking onto my channel and then you should see the video on the homepage. Now, the theme for dinner tonight was Italian, which <laughs> anyone that knows me will know that I would be pretty comfortable with that. I genuinely think I could eat Italian food every single day for the rest of my life and probably not complain. <laughs> now, starter for me it was parma ham and melon, and then my main was um, like meatballs. Now, I actually can't comment on dessert because, and I know that people will judge me when I say this, I don't know why I did it, but I skipped dessert because I, I was trying to <laughs> trying to be healthy, 
But hey, I mean, it was the last night of the cruise, I'm not sure what was going through my mind. Now, after that, I was up to get what looks like the world's smallest glass of wine, but I promise it was alright, and then into the show. Now, the show on here, actually, I know I really bigged it up earlier, it, I mean, it didn't disappoint, it just wasn't as good as what I saw on Discovery Princess a few weeks ago, so I've, to be honest, put that down to the fact that maybe on a smaller ship they don't have as huge a budget, but hey, still much better than I could do, so, so good. And that's it, that's a full overview of what a day in Eden and back on board Core Princess would look like. Um, hopefully, see you for the next video, which I'll be getting online next week. And for now, just thanks for watching and catch up soon. Great, cheers guys, bye.